Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel, welcome to this quick video. So for this video we're going to be taking a look at what I think is a very rare item now. Now it's not particularly rare because it's old, uh, this is only actually 45 years old, it dates from March 1979. But I think the fact that it's rare is because it was actually published as a design in a magazine and you actually built it yourself. So. Uh, I would imagine it came in kit form or you could build your own. Uh, now the example I've got looks like it might have been uh, built from a kit because it's got the original case and, and the proper front panel to it. So uh, we are of course talking the Practical Wireless Winton 50 plus 50 um, watt amplifier that used the latest at the time Hitachi uh, vertical power MOSFET transistors uh, and as you know power MOSFETs have a big advantage over bipolar because they have a negative temperature coefficient so they don't go into thermal runaway when they get hot but uh, enough of that talk let's get the cover off here and we'll take a look at it first I'm saying take a look at it because this is actually supposed to be working with a very very slight fault um, uh, apparently the volume controls or some of the controls crackle there's, there's not a great deal wrong with it I was told uh, so let's take a quick look at it and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look and see if I can find out the practical wireless it was published in I know it's March 1979 uh, it first appeared on the front cover uh, but whether I can find the magazine or not because I've got hundreds of magazines here uh, and all my magazines aren't here, a lot are at home in the loft, although there's quite a lot here, so that could be quite a ta an undertaking task to actually find the magazine it's printed in. But first, let's pick up the camera, get this cover off, and have a look under the cover. Right, so here we go then. Look at that. Uh, now the first thing you'll notice is these knobs are actually a little bit dirty, they want a good clean up. Um, it's in very good cosmetic condition, apart from there's a little bit of veneer missing there. Uh, but let's take a look over the front panel first. Nice and slowly so you could have a good look. Uh, these look like they're a bit dirty might want taking out the case to clean these up properly uh, but there we go the practical wireless Winton designed by T&T Electronics so that's your front view uh, we'll turn it round look at the back and uh, I'll go over the back quite slowly so you can have a look uh, there's your speaker terminals what are these fuses uh, I would imagine there's two speaker fuses and a mains fuse uh, you also got two outlets there they'd be mains power outlets these are the Hitachi vertical MOSFETs VMOS um, the old style dim plug let's just see if I can zoom in on these so you've got a 2SK133 and it's complementary pair a 2SJ48 uh, which I've no doubt will be well copied uh, and probably for sale on the world's biggest fake online marketplace. Uh, I did have a look a few days ago um, at some VMOS transistors and there was a guy uh, he got some original ones, they weren't this number, they were a different number uh, but I think he wanted about £700 for eight of them uh, I did actually take a picture of it on my phone, let me just see if I can find it right there you go, look on my phone uh, so what have we got there, we've got eight uh, VFETs and he wants £699 for eight original genuine parts um, so you know something like that it's in big demand it's going to be well copied by the Chinese fakes uh, and available all on the internet but you can see by that 
uh, these are quite rare devices they're not actually the same number as these but they are VFETs for sale so I think what we'll do now is we'll have a look how we get into this thing and we'll take a look inside right so underneath uh, there just appears to be a couple of screws and I would imagine that the chassis all just slides out of that wooden case right so here we go it's out of the cabinet I'll go over it nice and slowly so you can have a really good look Let's just tilt it forwards a bit so you can see There we go, practical wireless, Winton, designed by T&T Electronics. I'm not really sure who they are. Uh, I'll have to look them up. But it appears to be a, a good quality glass fibre PCB. Um, and it's divided up into sections so you can see the different parts, which is a very, a very nice touch. It's even got all the component reference numbers on the screen print. Uh, and... Um, Whoever's built this, it's not, I've got to say, the best construction I've ever seen. The soldering in places is actually quite poor, uh, although it's a pretty good effort. Um, I mean, look at that, that's, that's not good at all. And if we look uh, down there at the capacitors... <coughs> Yeah, it's not really that good, but I am told this is working. So it'll be interesting to compare this uh, with what it actually looks like in the magazine. One thing I have noticed though, which is a really, really nice touch, and this is exactly what I do when I'm building things. Um, if you look at all the resistors there, the uh, gold tolerance band, they're all facing exactly the same way. Uh, the gold band to the right. So somebody's taken quite a lot of care in building this, uh, even though the soldering itself is not particularly good um, now let's turn it upside down and have a look at the underneath view right once again underneath we've got another very nice touch here is a removable metal plate with some screws missing um, so let's just undo them screws and have a look underneath Right, underneath the soldering isn't actually too bad. Uh, it's certainly a lot better than it is on the top. Uh, apart from one little place there where whoever's made it's actually damaged the track and they've had to use a, uh, one of the component wires there to link the track over. Um, but overall, I mean that's not a bad attempt. Um, under there, I don't know if you can see, but this some component there been fitted without cutting the wires off but uh, no big deal you know whoever's done this it's, it's a very reasonable attempt at this right let's um, put that plate back on and turn it back over now just one small thing I have noticed uh, but I'm not overly bothered about it because I bought this mainly for its historical value and not because I want to use it. Um, if you look down there, one, I'll see if I can zoom the camera in, one of these power electrolytics, uh, the safety vent has burst there and it's actually leaking electrolyte. Let's see if we can get a better light on it. There, you can just about see it there, leaking electrolyte. So, I mean, that will need changing, uh, and one of them's not going to be cheap. Uh, but that shouldn't stop us plugging it in and just trying it out. 
I think what I'll do is um, rather than plug it straight in the mains I'll just run it up through a variac slowly so we can charge up these capacitors because we don't know how long it was uh, since this was last used but yeah what a thing of beauty that is right so let's pop it back into its case now right so I'm just starting at 30% mains uh, we'll just let it stew like that for a while and then I'll I'll keep uh, increasing over time and then we'll get a pair of speakers to it so yeah we've got a light there 30% mains uh, so I'll come back in a bit I'll do some other work and I'll come back and then we'll get a pair of speakers to it see if we can get it fired up right so that's sat for long enough now I've turned it up slowly over the day uh, we're actually running full mains now um, You can see the capacitor's still charged up because the light's still lit there uh, when we turn it off. And uh, I've checked the speaker sockets, there's no DC in the speaker, so we're good to uh, try it out. All I can find is half a dim plug. Um, so we should be able to connect it to my phone um, and a pair of speakers, but so far we're looking good to go. Let's just get a pair of speakers now. Right, so here we go, a pair of speakers connect to it, it's turned on. There was a bit of a crackle when I turned the volume control. But that's not really a lot, it's nothing a bit of service oil won't cure anyway. Um, and I've got the half a dim plug in, if I touch the wires. Yeah, we've got audio left and right, so let's see if we can get this connected to my phone now and get some sound going through it. Right, here we are, got connected to my phone. Royalty free heavy metal music. Uh, let's try this. Yeah, it is uh, very, very crackly on one side. Yeah, all in all, apart from the crackly volume control, it does seem to be in working order. So I guess really all we need to do now to complete the video is uh, have a look and see if we can find the practical wireless uh, 1979 that this appeared in. Now I will have it because I've been buying practical wireless since 1974. Can I find it? That is the problem because I don't have anything at all in order. Uh, so if we look under there, um, all in these boxes are practical wireless magazines, you can see them all stacked up here, um, there's also more at the back, uh, there's more and more in boxes, there's about two layers deep there, um, but not only that, I've got magazines at home and nothing I've got is in any order whatsoever so I think the thing to do now is stop the camera and uh, I'll wait till I finish work and then I have an hour and a half to spend to uh, have a look under all this lot see if I can find it otherwise I'll have to have a look in the loft at home but yeah as you can imagine it's not going to be an easy task Right, so I'm looking for the Practical Wireless magazine, March 1979, 
it's almost an impossible task because I've been buying practical wireless since 1974 um, among many other magazines so um, I've got thousands of them so I've just looked through a load of boxes there it's not in there um, I've looked through these not in here um, would you believe I've gone through all these boxes and it's the it's in the very very last box now these aren't all the magazines um, all under there is full of uh, magazines um, I've got books up there I've got magazines there. I've got more at home but I've just managed to find it in the last box I've got here I've got more boxes at home so it's February 79 January 79 that's the one there March 1979 now the thing about all these magazines um, I don't have anything in any order look at that there 1976 uh, so we go 76 77 76 69 82 nothing here is in any order whatsoever so it's an impossible task trying to look for anything uh, but luckily I've come across it uh, before anybody says anything I know you can get these on the world radio history um, but there's nothing as good as having your own copy that you actually bought all them years ago right now I've only managed to find one two three four five copies here at work the rest will be at home in the loft but it doesn't matter because we've got the important one so I'll have a, I'll show you what I've been able to find uh, January 79 uh, and if you look at this it costs 50p for the magazine um, February 79 March 79 that is the important one because that is the one it appears on the front um, I haven't got the April one here I've got the May 79 and I've got December 79 uh, now this actually ran over three uh, editions so it's March April and May so we've got the one in the middle missing but it doesn't matter because uh, this is the important one, the one it first appeared in. Uh, and if you look at that, the prototype was actually built on like a Vero board type material. It wasn't built with a, uh, a printed circuit board. But you can see that appears to have smaller capacitors in than what I've got. Um, so let's just have... A quick look uh, that's it there page 39 uh, and actually it says they're designed by EA rule and if we look down there proprietor obviously of TNT electronics I must look them up on the internet and see if they're still around uh, but the interesting thing here if you look at this uh, the building cost in 1979 was £110. Pounds. Uh, and that is another reason why there won't be many of these about. Because if that was £110 pound and the magazine was 50p, that was an absolute fortune back then. Let's just have a really quick scan over here. Uh, another uh, unfortunate thing about this um, is it's split down the middle by a special supplement there um, so that's the input uh, that's one section of the amplifier and then we have to turn turn quite a few pages of this pull out over till we get back to the rest of it uh, I'm not I'm going to resist a temptation to pull that out like it suggests uh, but yeah uh, 
so let's look at the May 79 one now. Uh, so here we go, page 51, PW Winter Stereo Amplifier completing the construction setting up. So yeah, that will the um, this will be the very last one. It will have been in three parts. Let's just have a look at page 51. Oh, there we go. Recommends there that you don't use any cheaper parts such as the RS component transformer So there we go practical wireless Winton 50 watts a channel stereo amplifier 1979 I was still at school then um, What an item that is I think that's rare um, But it'd be nice to hear from anybody else who's actually got one or somebody who built one and sold it or uh, Maybe this was yours at one time. All right, guys and girls on YouTube. Many thanks for watching my channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.